folks, Market Titus. Uh, it is Saturday, and as you can see outside my window back out there, it is kind of cold and frosty out. But today we have an engine on the dyno. This is something we don't normally get to dyno a lot. It's We have a 351 Cleveland on the dyno, and it's what I would consider like an old school stock Cleveland, meaning it is uh, stock block, stock four barrel heads, it has a stock Ford crank, stock rods. It has um, TRW pistons in it, which is kind of, you know, what we used to do back in the late 70s, early 80s, and even into the 90s, that was what we ran. It has a strip dominator manifold on it. Um, the camshaft that's in the engine, it is a solid roller. I don't uh, know the full particulars on the camshaft, and the reason that is, is because this engine was brought to us already built and the engine apparently had sat in a storage um, facility for several years and had not gotten run it had had been built but never run but it appeared that the engine froze and cracked the block so it was brought to us and another block so that we could um, machine a new block and put all these components and everything in the in the old engine and that's what we did. Um, we did do just some very, very minor upgrades. We did do uh, the oil upgrades and what we normally do now on pretty much all our Cleveland builds that are stock blocks is which is we lifter bore, we bush all the lifter bores. Um, we did, you know, went through the block and line honed it, square decked it, bored it, honed it, um, one piece rear seal. And if you remember back um, a while ago, we did a video about the Cleveland oiling systems where I was taking um, lifters out of a block while we were priming the block and showing the oil pressure at the back of the block and how much the oil pressure would drop if you didn't do the lifter bore bushings compared to how much you could pull the lift. And the oil pressure would basically go to nothing if you pulled a, a block that didn't have lifter bore bushings in it. You pulled the lifters out, it basically the oil pressure went to zero. Uh, and then we did a... a Demo, a demo where we pulled a lifter out and it dropped about a half a pound of pressure and we or actually a pair of lifters because they were hydraulic rollers um, actually no they were solid rollers it was this engine that we did that on is what I'm getting to so today we'll be able to see really what the result of those oil mods actually do so um, what we're going to do is the, the owner should be here in a little while we're going to um, we're going to dyno the engine and we'll go through it with him and show him how to, you know, set valves and that sort of kind of thing when the engine gets hot. Um, and just go over some, some features with him. Okay, so this is the engine itself. Um, as I said before, it's got a highly stripped dominator on it. It's got uh, original four barrel heads. Um, when the engine came here, it had a front sump oil pan on it, so we converted it to a rear sump because I think the fellow wants now to put it in a Fox body. Um, I think this engine was originally had a different purpose in it when it was built many, many years ago. Um, but uh, pretty much a standard, like I say, old school style build. Now this is our house carburetor that we use just on the, on the dyno because he didn't have a carburetor. Um, the water pump and everything will be coming back off of this because it's going to be fitted with a motor plate. Um, as far as um, performance upgrades, like I say, as far as the cam specs, I'm not even really sure exactly. I know roughly kind of what the cam specs are. It's got a pretty good size roller, a uh, solid roller cam in it. And um, since the engine had been built many years ago, the owner did not have the cam card. So uh, and the cam didn't really have any identifying numbers, specs, or anything like that on it. So we just, as far as the lash and that sort of stuff, we went with um, what we would normally set our stuff up at. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, like I say, this is a flat top engine, stock crank, stock rods. Uh, as far as the only upgrades that we really did, other than the block machining, um, we did take out these older style um, cast rocker arms. And we did put in, I don't know if we can even see down inside of there, 
Eh, maybe not. Uh, we did put in some nice Scorpion rocker arms to because they're a bit stronger for uh, solid roller valve springs than what these are. We just didn't want to have a problem. I don't really, I haven't used these in probably 30, 35 years. Uh, we just didn't want to have a problem with those. And the only other thing that we did was um, we, when we went through the block and line honed the block and board and hone the block we just used arp uh, head studs main studs and that sort of stuff it just had standard bolts in it before so we just upgraded the fasteners upgraded the rocker arms and pretty much everything else is how this engine was brought to us okay as i was saying what we're going to do is look at uh the oil pressures and everything like that so i've made a couple warm-up pulls on the engine just to warm it up and break it in a little tiny bit before we start running really hard on it but I ran it from about 3,000 to about 5,000, and I ran it from about 32 or 33 to like 5,500. Um, I don't think we've even taken the thing to, to 6,000 yet to see what it was doing. But I just wanted to show you kind of what the oil pressure <clears throat> looks like during a pull. So the pull starts out at about 3,000 RPM with 90 and a half pounds of oil pressure. And of course, this was the first pull, so the oil is still even a little bit, um, um, colder you see the water temperature is about 140 degrees but throughout the pull it varies really less than a pound and a half and we go to the next pull where the oil is a little bit different so it starts out at about 87 pounds and pretty much it ends up at 87 pounds it drops down to about 86 pounds throughout the middle of the pull on this pull, it starts out at 89 pounds and pretty much stays constant. And then we go over here to the fourth one where it's 87 pounds and it just stays 87 pounds. It actually increased a little bit. Now, one interesting thing on this engine is this is a Moroso Fox body pan. Uh, it's designed to have, if I'm not mistaken, seven quarts in it. Now we have right now there's only five quarts in this entire engine. Now we don't uh, have to have it completely full because on the dyno we're not cornering and sloshing and the engine taking off and the oil's climbing up the back of the pan due to the car launching or anything. But this engine has, like I say, five quarts total in the whole engine. So that includes one quart for the filter. So that really means there's four quarts in the engine. And then if you take away probably the half a quart that remains laying in the head, the lifter galley and all that sort of stuff, there's probably really only about three and a half quarts in the pan. And you can see, even with only five quarts of oil in this engine, how steady that oil pressure is on those four warm-up pulls. So that just goes to show a little bit of what um, making the oil system uh, properly machining it, machining, uh, honing the lifter bores to size to where they oil properly with the lifters. Um, it just goes to show you how, you know, when you do things properly, it works out good because normally, you know, you would see this pressure drop at least five or six pounds throughout the pull. But on this engine, it's within most of the times less than a pound of pressure throughout the pull. One other thing to note, um, with this engine only having probably three and a half at the most three and three quarter quarts in the pan, that really um, debunks the whole theory of things pumping the pan dry. Um, if we were going to pump the pan dry, we would definitely do it when, we're, when we are uh, two and a half to three quarts lower on oil than what we would normally be. And it doesn't matter. If you're going to pump the pan dry, so to speak, um, it doesn't matter whether you have the engine sitting still or doing whatever, because in order to pump the pan dry, the old theory was, well, all the oil ends up in the top of the engine and it doesn't get a chance to drain back down to the bottom of the engine. So um, just another note, that theory doesn't fly. It's, it's a uh, few days before we leave to go to PRI. Um, one of the things that we are going to do, this engine is another uh, bit of a unique opportunity. 
not much uh, stuff that we get in has the ability to be dynoed before we take it apart. So this engine, the owner wants us to uh, dyno the engine, just do some pulls on it and see what it does. But he brought it here for us to do all the block machining, like the lifter bore bushings and all that stuff in it. Um, we're not really sure if we're gonna make any upgrades in the uh, engine or not, because um, we'll just see how it runs before, before we do anything to it. And then we'll see how it runs after we do all of our um, our machining and everything to it. So we'll be able to look at oil pressures and that sort of thing. And this engine is um, equipped with the famous uh, oil line that goes from the front of the engine back up here into the back of the engine. So we'll get a chance to see what that does. We'll take and unhook it during the pull and then we'll run it with it and maybe we'll see if it does make any difference at all or if it just makes the oil pressure gauge a little happier. But um, we're gonna dyno this one probably when we get back from PRI in about a week or so. And then this engine will be the last one that we dyno probably until first of the year. Um, no, I take that back. We're gonna be dynoing right before the first of the year. Um, but we're gonna take the dyno for some much needed maintenance. We're gonna take the dyno itself apart uh, we're going to upgrade our dyno controls. Um, last year at PRI, I picked up our new uh, dyno controller, which has more inputs and outputs and everything in it. And uh, it is still sitting on my desk to be installed. So uh, hopefully we're going to finally after a year get that done.